drought is still fairly much a bit of a problem. The ground is green, but grass growth levels are way below where they need to be. So in those situations, if you're in some of those parts of the eastern side of the country, people are going in with silage. Some of our program farmers, if they have heavy cattle, within maybe 40, 50 days of finish, they've made, made the decision to, in some cases, put them into the shed. Hello and welcome to the Beef Edge, the Chagas Beef Podcast. For all your latest news, information and advice for Irish beef farmers. I'm Catherine Egan and on this week's episode, Dairy B500 manager Alan Dillon gives an update on the programme and how farmers are coping with the drought conditions, grassland management in the coming weeks and the upcoming National Open Day in County Limerick. Alan, you're very welcome. The rain has finally arrived in the past few days. It has, Catherine, yes. Um, I suppose it depends where you are in the country. There's parts in the east where uh, drought is still fairly much a bit of a problem. It, it's not, uh, ground isn't really burning up, but it's uh, ground is green, but grass growth levels are way below where they need to be. So in those situations, if you're in some of those parts of the eastern side of the country, um, people are going in with silage. Um, some of our program farmers, if they have heavy cattle, Within maybe 40, 50 days of finish, they've made, made the decision to, in some cases, put them into the shed and uh, feed them silage and meal to reduce grass demand outside. Meal has been introduced to um, calves as well, maybe up the rate, maybe by a kilo a day in the short term until grass supply increases. Um, and in some scenarios with lighter stores or, <clears throat> I suppose, yearling stock, what we're looking at is uh, maybe going a third, a third, a third in the diet, which means... We're going a third silage at grass. We're given a third of the diet in meal and a third of the diet is, is freshly grazed grass. And look, it's all only temporary until hopefully the rain arrives and a bit of fertilizer starts working and grass growth rates kick back into where we expected them to be. Um, if you're in, I suppose, most of the south at this stage and the western side of the country, um, you're probably fine at this stage in most scenarios. Um, we do see there's been some very heavy rain, particularly around that maybe southwest region, Limerick, parts of Tipperary, parts of Cork. There's been huge volumes of rain in the last week, up to four inches or more in spots, depending on where these thunder showers fell. So there is no real issue there with drought. And I suppose what farmers need to do is to plan for getting some nutrients into the ground, maybe again in terms of slurry or fertilizer and, and get that grass going. Um, grass quality has deteriorated reason, fairly dramatically, I'd say, in the last while. Um, where there is covers of grass available, it's generally gone to seed um, there is some something needs to be done with this grass in terms of either bringing out the topper after we graze it out or as you're taking it out for bale silage if you have enough grass ahead so farmers need to make a decision on that in the next uh, in the next uh, while about what they're going to do to try and rectify quality but by and large quality is, is deteriorated fairly dramatically it's quite poor and in a lot of cases Alan the quality has decreased fertilizer hasn't been spread on grazing ground in the past few weeks with the drought what's the advice now at the moment that the rain has come for fertilizer on grazing ground yeah, I suppose at this stage, look, it depends on your stocking rate, but I would say almost all ground would probably need some little bit of fertiliser at this stage, even if it's only maybe 20 units of protected urea and the nitrogen side. Uh, some people maybe for P and Ks are low, you could maybe go with a compound like 18612, give it a bag, a bag and a half of that to the acre or thereabouts. I suppose the only thing to watch is that, there, you know, you have had some rainfall or rain is due to fall, but at the same time, what you do want to maybe watch, just uh, it's only a small chance of it happening is these extreme intense downpours where there's maybe 30, 40 mil falling in an hour. You do want to be as careful that you're not spreading fertilizer just before this happens and you end up with a, a danger of some of it being washed off the ground. It, it's rare where it'll happen, but there, there have been cases where we've seen, you know, an inch and a half of rainfall in, 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 in a cup in 30, 40 minutes where the heavens have opened and there is maybe a slight risk there of runoff. So it's just something to be aware of, but at the same time, look, this rain is needed. We need it to get out there. We need it to get get a bit of fertilizer out and freshen that ground up again and get it, get grass growing and get it back on track. And farmers that are closing up for a second cut silage at the moment, Alan, and in some cases there's been very little growth since first cut. What fertilizer should they be applying? I suppose they need to, first of all, I'd say utilize their slurry. So I suppose these farmers need to get out with maybe two, two and a half thousand gallons of slurry to the acre. Ideally, use the dribble bar if you can or the trail and shoe um, to get that extra bit of nitrogen out of the slurry. Um, it, uh, while nitrogen has fallen a good bit in value or in, in price in the last uh, in the last month or two um, it's still I suppose an expensive product to buy so try and get as many units as you can out of what slurry is available so look if you're given ground that's been cut maybe three three weeks ago it's pr- probably more at this stage and it's still fairly bare or fairly white in some kind of, some scenarios going out with your slurry with the drill bar two and a half thousand gallons to the acre and maybe topping that up with maybe a bag or a bag and a bag and a half of, of protected urea 
should provide probably enough enough nitrogen and, and P and K to, to grow a decent crop of second cut silage. Again, look, it depends on where your first cut finished up. Some people had flurry out very early in the year when ground was dry in February and, and were able to travel with fertilizer there come late March, early April, and they got excellent first cuts. Other people, their first cuts are back dramatically um, from, la- from, from last year. And some of that may be based on the fact they're making all bales and uh, that some of the bales are actually extremely dry this year. I know a lot of contractors and farmers talk to them. Um, a lot of that hay or, or silage, sorry, should I say, that was, that was cut there in the month of May and baled up. You know, it was borderline hay in terms of the, the, the actual dry matter content. It was extremely dry because of that hot baking sun. And I suppose there will be less bales to the acre um, in, in that scenario. But people need to take that into account when they're calculating the quantity of dry matter they actually have inside in the yard and their, and their requirements for the, for the winter ahead. And farmers across the country, Alan, and some farmers that are in the programme had carried out receding prior to the drought. How are they coping? Yeah, Catherine, we, we had a couple of farmers actually that were, had grown sprayed off for quite a length of time and uh, they had receded there in the past few weeks. And I suppose it, it's, uh, it's still, you know, they're, they're, they're probably at this stage starting to look at maybe a couple of seed heads shooting up, but there's probably three weeks to a month behind where they need to be. So there probably is a bit of a extra pressure on the system there if they've taken out a bit of extra ground for reseeding um, based on the fact that th- these, these swords won't be back in action for at least another four or five weeks. I suppose the most important thing there is to watch for the post-emergent spray, not to let the dikes of the docks and them get too far ahead. Even in drought scenarios, you can see those those docks starting to take hold. And, you know, if any of you have cut a crop of silage um, where there was docks in the field and you see where the, the, the field might still be almost white, but the docks are growing because of the deep taproot. So when those docks start to take hold, it's very hard to kill them. And that's the most important thing is to watch for that stage where you can get that post-emergent spray out. Other than that, look, it's just a waiting game. And, you know, the reseeds will come. The crops won't, the, the reseeds won't fail. Once you get a good spill of rain down top of it, within a couple of weeks, you'll start to see those, uh, a, a good cover of grass starting to come in that ground. And it's a case of just watching, getting back in and uh, taking off maybe a light grazing at the, at the first opportunity. That's great, Alan. And I suppose calves that have been weaned are being managed at grass at the moment on the farms across the programme. How are they being managed at the moment? I suppose... Grass supply is still very tight on a lot of the farms, while grass is starting to come around because there is such a lag, I suppose, and there was, in some scenarios there was very little, very little covers available. You might, we might, we're probably in some scenarios dealing with a case where you, you don't have a great grass supply ahead. So we have kept up the meal at probably a higher level than we would have expected in a lot of cases with calves. So instead of maybe just giving them a half a kilo or a kilo at this time of the year, we're giving them up to two kilos in some scenarios to try and uh, stretch out grass supply and to ensure that the calves are still thriving. Um, there was probably a tendency when the grass, when gra- grass growth was very lo- very low, that uh, we are grazing swords out probably a bit tighter than we would normally have with calves. So just be aware of that. You don't want to put calves under too much pressure with grazing. They're a selective grazing animal. They probably won't thrive as well if you're forced them to graze down below, you know, four centimetres down to three centimetres or lower, which is happening in places. Um, so just be sure that you keep a, qu- a good supply of fresh grass in front of them at all times. Uh, the other thing to watch for, I suppose, looking, it's not a major problem, but I do hear cases of people saying they have issues with summer scour. Um, if it actually is summer scour that you have on your farm, you know, keeping the meal into the calf, ensuring that rumen is well developed, even throwing maybe a supplement for of, of maybe hay or straw into a feeder inside in the field where the calves are is no harm either. If they want it, they'll pick at it. If they don't need it, they won't go near it. And that's like the calf will decide that based on what their rumen, what their rumen requires. Um, the other thing to remember, I suppose, is the, is the dosing uh, it needs to be needs to be tackled in calves at the last stages. So we would recommend fecal sampling calves at grass at this time of year, seeing what the worm burden is like. Um, that will determine what, what gut worms are inside in the animal. And I suppose in terms of ooze or, or coughing, um, you know, there probably will be a, a, a share of lungworm in the calves as well at this stage. So we would recommend it going in with some sort of a dose. Uh, at this stage, if you haven't gone already, or maybe you're looking towards your second dose, depending on how long your calves are out, uh, would, would depend on the worm burden. So you know, generally we say go up maybe your white trenches or your levicides early on the time that give more of a slow kill in the calves rather than maybe your ivermectins, which will do a bit of a faster kill. A slower kill is probably more preferable in a calf early in the stage of life. Particularly after the dry weather in the past number of weeks, lungworm will be an issue in the coming weeks, Alan. Yes, yes, definitely. Um and I suppose for older stock as well, it's something to bear in mind. You probably need to start going in. You'd hear a lot of coughing in fields at the minute with cattle. So going in maybe with a, you know, some kind of a, 
ivermectin type product maybe would would be recommended at this stage with with year and a half as well or yearlings like grass that they would have picked up a significant amount of warmth at this stage especially when you as you said when the the wet weather hits after a long dry spell you do see a lot of, a, a big increase in in warm burdens and you have a national open day coming up Alan, in county limerick we do Catherine, yes Kieran bartley is in boher county limerick so we're going to have a national open day with him he's one of our calf to beef monitor farms he's Basically based in in uh, on in just outside the village of Oher, just off the N24, the main Limerick Waterford Road, and it's going to be on the 29th of June at six o'clock in the evening. Uh, what we're going to look at on the day there is basically show what Kieran's have been at on the farm for the last number of years. He's uh, purchased a, a farm of land beside him, and he's starting to undertake some significant development work on that in terms of reseeding and drainage, and he will have to build a shed obviously to to accommodate extra stock on the farm. So we'll be, we'll be chatting about that and what options are available and what some of the costings will be on the farm. And also we want to show the system he runs. So he's he's running about 160 calves, taking them nearly all of them all the way through to finish. Uh, the vast majority will be Frisian, but he is moving slowly into buying some more high uh, commercial beef value calves. So they'd be more top end uh, Herefords and Anguses uh, with a high CBV. Uh, to try and improve, I suppose, the beef merit of his calves and try and get more out of the opposite end in terms of in terms of beef, in terms of his uh, carcass performance. So we can, we'll be talking about that and showing what he's doing on what I suppose is kind of a heavy farm. There's some of it quite dry, but a lot of the land there will be a bit heavy in nature. And um, it, that brings its own challenges, I suppose. He's probably benefiting now at this stage that he's not having, under too much pressure for grass growth. But during the springtime, it was a significant challenge on, on that type of farm where we had huge volumes of rain, uh, a lot of poaching, I suppose, we're trying to avoid as best we could. And um, I suppose a, a late start to the grazing season, which which brings its own challenges later in the year. That's great, Alan. We look forward to the walk on Kieran Bartley's farm on the 29th of June at 6pm. Thanks very much, Alan. OK, thanks very much, Catherine. That's all for this week's episode. And my thanks to Alan for joining me on the show. You can catch up on all other shows and interviews from the Beef Edge podcast on the Chagas website at chagas.ie or you can listen on Apple and Google Podcasts as well as Spotify. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe so you never miss a show. For all other updates from our beef programme, keep an eye on our Twitter and Facebook pages. Until next time, I'm Catherine Egan and thanks for listening.